Hey there guys, and welcome back to Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we were uh, pretty much just taking a stroll through the battle zone, trying to get somewhere. And that's pretty much exactly what's gonna happen in this episode. Uh, who did I put up front last time? I hope that either Rotom or Torterra is gonna be it, because if not, then... Well, it's a Meryl. Ah, uh, Porygonzy, Porygonzy, he's got Thunderbolt, no problem. Because honestly, what do I have to fear from a Meryl? Also, why the hell are they still showing me a Meryl? Because Meryl is in the Sinnoh Dex. I've seen a shit ton of it. Why is it not an Azumarill? Instead. It's just weird. I mean, this isn't even for Pokedex reasons, like that level 51 Talo in the previous episode. Ooh, Wilmer. That's a new one. Ah, uh, Wilmer. I... I don't think I've ever used that in uh, any of my in-game teams. I kind of wonder how good it is as far as those purposes go. Because it doesn't really seem like a very good Pokémon to use in-game. It's not really that, that strong, it evolves really late. Level 40, I believe. Although that's actually, compared to most other Pokémon these days, that's not that late. I mean, in uh, black and white, they go and add stuff like uh, Mian Fu or Bisha or uh, Ponyard or something, which don't evolve until like level 50, which is ridiculous. Or whatever, also a Sfeel, which is also not a threat at all, and now she's sinking. She's got a beach ball, use that as a flotation device or something. Ooh, what do we have here? Nice little piece of real estate. This guy. Hey, Konnichiwa, glad to meet you. Guten Tag. He's... Oh, I remember this guy. He uh, gives you a Magikarp or something. And he'll power up your Pokedex so you can read Pokedex entries in like different languages, like French and German and Spanish. Basically every language the Pokemon games are released in. Which is, as far as I know, English, German, French, Spanish, Japanese, and I want to say Korean. Though I'm not entirely sure on that one. If your native language is pretty much any other language, you're pretty much boned. For example, there is no Dutch version here. Me uh, being a... how old was I? It was 1997, I think, so I was probably like 5 or 6 or something. 5 or 6 year old me had to play Pokemon Blue entirely in English. And that is predominantly the reason why I am probably pretty damn good at speaking English at this point in my life. I mean, I have like three diplomas hanging on my wall, which pretty much downright state that I am awesome at English. Anyway, going up against a Tauros, using Swagger on a Porygon Z. Well, I guess it does kind of work. It's actually a pretty safe bet, because Porygon Z can't make use of the boosted attack to hit back anyway. Come on, Porygon Z. Get a try attack out or something. There we go. Is that gonna kill though? Because a Tauros is, I think it's decently bulky and it's five levels higher than my than my Porygon Z is. Excellent. And is that gonna get me to level 57? Probably. There we go. All right, what other Pokemon did he have? Or was this his only, yeah, this was his only one. Shouldn't have paid attention to my urge. What urge did he have? I wasn't paying attention to what he said before battle. Anyway, look, it's little bike ramps. Oh, crap. Kinda overshot that one there. Oh, look, it's the rival up there, up to the left. What the hell is he doing? Are we gonna battle him again? Pokemon Ranger Felicia with a skip loom. Okay, why not a jump love? I mean, okay, I get you haven't seen any of that evolution line for dex purposes, but still, why skip loom? Level 59 Hopep would admittedly be worse, though. Anyway, Ice Beam is gonna take it out, because it's a grass and flying type, even though it doesn't really look the flying part whatsoever. And a Lopany. Uh, I guess we'll leave that one up to Staraptor. Normal type, close combat, that's what Staraptor does best. My team is surprisingly lacking in fighting type moves. Because really, fighting type moves are... I think they're very common among most Pokemon. I think that on my team, though, the only Pokemon that can even learn 
something like a fighting move are Staraptor and Guard Jump. Not, well, there are, I think Torterra can get Super Power and uh, maybe Octillery gets Focus Blast or something. And I think Porygon Z will get Focus Blast as well, but that's not really a very good move. Honestly, we need better sp special fighting moves. Hey, look, it's the rival and Crash Awake. What the hell is he doing out here? It's been a while, yes, since I've kicked his ass. If I close one's a Pokemon. That's my master of the words of wisdom. Are you still having trouble understanding? I don't for a second ever recall accepting he was an apprentice. That's right, you tell him. But oh master, don't be that way. How dense is he? Crash Rake outright states that he's not gonna be his master, and yet the rival still can refuses to understand it. Better be fully prepared, I've got to get ready for another tournament. Farewell. Honestly, he needs to return in like a future Pokemon game, game and have that wrestling bird from Generation 6. The, uh, the Hall Lucha, or however the hell you pronounce that. That would go hand in hand with Crash Awake so well. I know we talk to this lady and she'll heal your Pokemon up. Which is pretty handy because we're pretty far away from the nearest Pokemon Center. I don't get why she insists on healing my Pokemon again though, you only need to heal them once. Anyway, up we go. It's kind of ashy out here. Oh, hey, look, it's Buck again. Hey, Buck, what's up? He's training anyway. Could you do me a favor? Like, he told Stuck Mountain for me. Uh, why? Why can't you do it yourself? Keeps the Pokemon asleep. Remember Vandals in Stark Mountain. Goons in spacesuits. Oh, we know goons in spacesuits. Oh, boy. Turns out that Team Galactic isn't quite dead after all. Uh, let's see, where are we supposed to go here? First, we'll pick this up, Yellow Shard, sure, why not? And then, over here we have another item, a Zinc, that's disappointing. I guess I can still battle that woman, though. Go and put Torterra up front, because my starter should not be the lowest level Pokemon in my party. Alright, what do you have? Hopefully stuff we haven't seen before. So I can rant about how much they suck. Surviper. Well, I kind of hate telling that Surviper sucks. Be honestly, the truth is it does. But I like Surviper. It's, it's got a really cool design, move set wise. It's got plenty of access to good moves. It's just its stats kind of suck. Not even that much. I mean. I think it has like base 100 in both attacking stats, but its speed is just too slow to make use of it. Such a shame, because it's a really cool Pokemon. Probably one of my favorites from Generation 3. And a Persian. Yeah, I don't really like that one nearly as much. Anyway, that's easy pickings for Staraptor. Intimidate neuters it, and then close combat will beat the shit out of it. Although I will say Persian is not all that bad. It's pretty fast, it gets Technician, which will boost its Fake Out for one. Although, I'm not sure if that one actually has Technician, though that just might have been the Intimidate, because it can have other abilities. And in Generation 1, Persian was just too good. Mainly because of how messed up the critical hit mechanic was in Generation 1. Basically, if you, uh, the faster your Pokemon was, the higher your critical hit ratio was. Which basically translates to, the faster you are, the more chance you have at landing critical hits. And Persian was, I think, one of the fastest Pokemon in Generation 1. Only slower than, perhaps, a few others. And it could learn Slash, which has an increased critical hit ratio to begin with. So, I've never really played much of Generation 1, like competitive on simulators or whatever, but I do believe that Persian, when using Slash in Generation 1, pretty much always gets a critical hit. And that's pretty damn powerful. And, uh, crap. Oh, I'm supposed to go down here and then go back that way. Could've gone down there, there's just one item down there, it's probably gonna suck though. And what wild Pokemon do we have up on this mountain? Of course. Wouldn't be a mountain or a rocky place without Graveler being there. So tired of that one. Can they just for once make a Pokemon game in which Geodude and Graveler are rare Pokemon? Instead of the most common thing in every place that has two pebbles lying around. Anyway, fighting guy coming up, so let's put Staraptor up front and see what 
so, what weird fighting types that we haven't seen yet he has. Okay, buddy. He has two Pokemon. Breloom. Ooh, a grass and fighting type. That's even easier for Staraptor, though. Four times weak to flying. And Breloom is really not all that fast to begin with. Its attacking stat is really good, though. It's got like base 130 attack. That is very high. Honestly, you wouldn't, just looking at it, you wouldn't assume that this goofy looking mushroom kangaroo thing would hit so hard. And it has effect spore. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, well, I guess I could go back and heal. Although I probably have plenty of healing items as well. And then he has Medicham. Oh, come on, we've seen so many Medichams already. But whatever. Oh, of course he's gonna stall me out. I'm starting to think that might be his tactic. But I use Fly, so no problem. Unless he gets lucky and lands the Detect twice in a row. Of course he does. Whenever the AI does something that's based on luck, it seems that he always gets whatever he wants. What we'll kind of wonder... Oh, at least he doesn't get it three times in a row. And I'm just gonna kill him with Brave Bird, because why the hell not? Just want to show off that move a little bit, because I haven't used that that often. I mean, when did I? I think I used it against uh, Eren of the Elite Four, like, once. I think I used it on Cynthia's Rose Raid. That's really about it, I believe. And it's a pretty cool move. It's got a kick-ass animation in Pokemon X and Y. And you'll be seeing it a lot, because one of the most common Pokemon in X and Y battling is freaking Talonflame. Which pretty much runs Brave Bird all the damn time. And anyway, do I want to battle that guy, or... I think I'm supposed to go this way, actually. Oh, look, it's another Fero. Weren't they uh, on the other route as well? So great, Firo is basically the Staravia of this island. You'll find it everywhere. Lovely. Okay, ooh, I can see lava. I guess we're coming up on a volcano. Max Elixir, I'll take that, even though I think I have like 900 of those thanks to the action reap. Oh crap, here they are. What are they up to? Can that old guy really take over? Can he replace Master Cyrus? Yeah, I hear you. That Elder Caron. Oh, that old guy. It's a good time for me to be done with this Team Galactic thing. So, Cyrus is gone, but Team Galactic is still active. What could they be up to now? I mean, Cyrus was really the only one who made them... Oh, shit. There's where Cyrus went. Oh, they're looking for him? Toys where Giratina was? You're not making any sense. Don't play that card with me. Oh, crap. Well, I think you know, I've beaten these chumps plenty of times in the past, so I'll just beat them that easily now as well. Oh, look, our Bronzor finally evolved. That's about damn time. Uh, yeah, Staraptor's not really a good choice for this, though. And, well, let's give a close combat a go anyway. I mean, it's not like Staraptor's gonna be much use anyway, because he's gonna go down in, like, two turns thanks to Poison. So might as well give it a go, and of course he goes for an attacking move. I was kind of expecting like Confuse Ray or Hypnosis or something. Anyway, now at least I can bring in Octillery safely. And then he can just go for Flamethrower and hopefully take it out. Assuming that the game doesn't assume that I assume that it has uh, Levitate, so the game makes it have Heatproof. I don't think the game can really read my mind like that though. That would probably be the first sign of a Skynet-esque global takeover by Nintendo, and that would be quite ominous indeed. In a way, the bloody Perugly. Uh, that's gonna be a problem with Staraptor gone. Uh, sure, Garchomp, why not? Staraptor can beat it, but Garchomp's even stronger. Alright, you ugly kitty. Oh, shoot. That's gonna be a problem down the line. Because Brugly, if it outspeeds Garchomp, it outspeeds everything I have. With maybe, maybe with the exception of Rotom, I'm not entirely sure on how their speeds compare. Come on, Garchomp, it would be absolutely lovely if you woke up right about now. Damn it. Stop being so lazy, Garchomp. I just want you to wake up and use an earthquake in the middle of an active volcano. 
Doesn't sound like a very bad plan at all, and of course he gets a critical hit. Uh, I think uh, Garchomp's been asleep for pretty much the maximum possibility here. Luckily, I have full restores aplenty, so suck on that, Perugly. There we go, back to full health, sleep gone, and ready to commence kicking of a fat feline ass. Shadow Claw, okay, so it has Hypnosis, Slash, Shadow Claw, and I wonder what else, the, what the fourth move. God damn it! Hypnosis has like 60% accuracy, he should not be so lucky. Of course, it is the AI, I'm not exactly sure what I'm expecting here. Slash, okay, critical hit, probably. No, okay, Garchomp, come on. Wake up, please. Shadow Claw. Running out of Slash PP already? Oh, of course, critical hit. <sighs> Come on, Garchomp. Give it one more go. I think this is like the third turn. Finally. Alright, let's see what we got. Wreck that thing. Probably, I don't think it's that bulky, so it shouldn't take this that well. I'm surprised if it's going to one hit KO, though. Yeah, there we go. And, of course, it has a Citrus Berry. Right, well, I think one more Earthquake will do it in. And, of course, it's faster. Problem. Okay, let's see. Rotom might be a good idea, or Torterra. Yeah, Torterra is definitely the way to go here. Wait, where did he take that prior damage? Oh, Aerial Ace. Okay, that's its fourth move. Okay, let rip with a Wood Hammer. Smash that thing's skull in. Because honestly, it can't get a worse facial expression anyway. Look at that thing, that's going to be one of the ugliest Pokemon ever. I mean, I can kind of see where people say that the later generation somewhat jumped the shark in Pokemon design. And Perugly is definitely not one of the highlights of Generation 4. But still, there are plenty of good designs in the later generations as well. So all those Gen 1ers can just go and suck it, really. It's not like every Pokemon in Generation 1 was such an awesomely creative design. Look at Magnemite and Magneton. Look at Voltorb and Electro. Grimer and Muck. Diglett and Dugtrio. Uh, Coughing and Weezing. Staryu and Starmie. Omanite and Omastar. So many designs that are basically just, hey, let's make the first Pokemon slightly bigger and give it a slightly different color scheme or a slightly different put some spikes on it or whatever it's not like generation one was so super duper creative oh crap now we have to battle wait isn't there one of them but that's not present yeah the guy with uh what's his name with the uh, toxic croak where the hell did he go is he perhaps waiting or waiting for me further down in the dungeon Anyway, she also has a Bronzong, and of course I get the attack boost instead of the special attack boost, which I can actually use. So, uh... Well, we'll go for Thunderbolt, I guess. I mean, let's just see what this does. Might not be that good. Yeah, that's about as well as I expected. But, uh... Actually, Porygon Z doesn't have Dark Pulse anymore. I made him forget that for Tri-Attack. Which, I think in this generation is a better option for Porygon Z to begin with. Well, I could have gone, couldn't got her in Psychic or Thunderbolt or Ice Beam, but those seemed like better options. Especially because Ice Beam is my only... Well, I have Ice Beam on Octillery now as well, but that's Octillery. Kinda not want to have to rely on that thing, if I really have to. Anyway, Extra Sensory. Don't think that's gonna do overly much, because Bronzong is not a very offensive or offensively oriented Pokemon to begin with. And this should take it out. And then we're probably gonna get the Golbat or something, or the Skuntank, which I know she has. Kinda curious that they still all have Golbats, though, and not Crobats. I guess their Golbats just don't love them. Because that's how you make Golbat evolve into Crobat. You make it love you. Anyway, Skuntank. Torterra, just land an Earthquake on that thing. Still, that sprite looks like a dog taking a piss. I'm not exactly sure what the hell's up with that, and of course we get a critical hit. Bloody hell. Kind of surprised to see that Skuntank was faster than Torterra, though. I know Torterra is not particularly fast, but come on, it's got like 
52 levels, of course another attack boost. Never get the one I want, bloody download, kinda wish he had adaptability instead. At least that way I could just spam these beastly try attacks all over the place all the time. And Citrus Berry, totally unexpected. Okay, Night Slash, okay it's got Poison Jab, Night Slash. Kinda wonder what the other two moves are, cause Skuntank does not have a lot of options. I know it can get Explosion. That's pretty uh, hysterical, an exploding skunk. Alright, Surf. Oh, Smokescreen. Shit, we're gonna be playing that game again, are we? The Accuracy Slash Evasion game. Well, I hate that game, and I, for one, will not play it with you, dear sir. I said I will just swamp you with a nice little tidal wave that is barely going to knock you out. Barely not gonna knock you out. Poison Jab again. Octillery takes that. Of course it misses. Of course. And now Octillery is going to get his red little ass handed to him. Of course. Really starting to get tired of all this hacks game. At least throw me a boat every once in a while. Alright, at least we're gonna get to level 57 from that. And... Well, I, I, I still have Rotom, so I can still deal with the Golbat easily enough. And of course, Octillery goes down to poison damage. Um, yeah, Rotom. Who do I still have left now? I think Garchomp's down, Torterra's down, Staraptor was down. Octillery's down. I think Porygon Z was down as well, so... All I have left now is Rotom. Crap, that's not really good. Well, he, at least he can deal with the Golbat easily enough. And I just hope that those other grunts that were with them aren't going to battle me after this. Like, it's going to be a big-ass marathon battle or something. Kind of preferred it if they just double-teamed me or whatever. Then we could have just gotten it over with a lot faster. Oh yeah, sure, you guys go to the Distortion World. That is a really, really good idea. What is their obsession with this Cyrus guy? He was a massive asshole. I'm back to being ordinary girls who can mop up whichever way you want. Sure. Says so you an ordinary girl, you're not. What you're doing is living on a journey the right idea. And of course, no one's gonna arrest these assholes for all the crimes they did. I'm sure there's not too much enough for what? Yada yada yada. Struggle with the pieces, and that's fine. You can live with the dreams of her and freedom of reality. I'm not dealing with you. That's very smart. And away they go. And then in the next episode, which is also the finale, we're going to be chasing after that asshole and putting a stop to their plans once and for all. Bye-bye.